Welcome back, online family. It's your boy, JR, back again with yet another teaching. And today's topic is, who is Jesus? Uh, seeing I've been doing a lot of videos on this page, a lot of teachings, uh, I thought it was uh, only right that we, you know, talk about the man himself, uh, the guy, the king, uh, the, the head honcho, you know what I mean? The Don being Jesus himself. As you see, I got in the back, Jesus is the way, the truth and the light. So who exactly is Jesus? For someone who may have, I mean, I would, sometimes I think I assume everyone knows about Jesus, has heard of Jesus, and maybe that's the truth, but maybe for the sake of argument, someone is watching this video today and you're trying to get an understanding um, of who is Jesus? Who is this Jesus guy? You know, who is him? Who is he? Okay, I'm going to simplify it for you in this video. My prayer is, is that in time, as you get to know uh, Jesus for yourself on a personal level, that God would give you more understanding and enlightenment of, you know, um, why you need to know Jesus, why you have to have a relationship with Jesus and uh, for, know him for yourself. So in a, in a simplified version, I would say it like this, and I wrote it down just so that way, you know, I'm able to say it, you know, in a way that makes sense for the viewer. So I say, I'll write it like this. Jesus is the creator of this very world we live in. That's my first thing I'll say about Jesus. Jesus is the creator of this very world we live in. So you think about everything has a starting point. Um, you think about a car. A car that you see that's driving, it didn't start off like that. There were so many different pieces that had to come together to make that vehicle. You think about a human being. A man and a woman have sex and, you know, then from sperm getting with the egg and then creation comes in the belly and then a kid comes out. So when you see me, a grown man with hair and, you know, facial hair and, you know, I'm a fully grown man. I didn't start like this. I started somewhere. So when you think about Jesus, um, one of the ways I would put it to you is he's the creator of the very world you and me live in. You know what I mean? Water wasn't always just in the sea the way it is like now. You, there wasn't always a pathway. There wasn't always, you know, light on this earth. You know, these things were created by someone and it wasn't the Big Bang. It was Jesus. So when you think about Jesus, think the creator of the world. He created this world. So that's one of the things I'll say about Jesus, because there's so many things, you know, to say when you're talking about who is Jesus. This is like there's, there's so many different things to say about that. So that's one of the first things I'll say in a simplified version is Jesus is the creator of this very world we live in. Another thing I'll say to you is Jesus is the son of God. So when you think about uh, where does Jesus come from? He comes from God. For example, where do I come from? I come from my father. Where do you come from who's watching this? You come from your father. We all come from our father. We were all a sperm cell in our father. So in essence, we've all come from our father. So we, how is Jesus the son of God? Because he comes from God. So Jesus is not only the creator of this world, he's the son of God because he comes from God. Um, who else is Jesus? Jesus is the light of this world. So when you think about light, Jesus is light. How can I explain that? Okay, this lamp has a light bulb in it. The light bulb is what allows uh, this lamp to have a light. So when you think about Jesus, imagine Jesus, this is a practical example. Imagine this lamp, right? The whole lamp is Jesus and the light bulb is is, is reflection is so, is so bright. Think of Jesus like that. So when you think about Jesus being the light of the world, the reason why this earth can have a light is because Jesus is light. Now, again, this is really, um, this is a mature um, uh, description for someone who's new to all this. You might say, what? I understand. In time, this will all make sense. But Jesus is not only the creator of the world, he's the son of God who comes from God, and he's the light of this world. We are able to have light in this world because Jesus Christ exists. Light comes from him. In John chapter 8, Jesus says, verses 12, he says, I am the light of the world. He's the light of the world. Light exists because he exists. So those are three things I give you right there. He's the creator of this very world we live in. He's creator. The world started with him. He's the beginning of creation. And you think about also, he's the son of God who comes from God. He's the light of this world, which means we're able to have light in this world because Jesus Christ exists. He is also 
the savior of all those who give their lives to him and submit to his authority. And you might say, savior, why, why is Jesus a savior? Well, the reality is um, we live in a world where evil exists. Demons are real. The devil is real. Hell is real. Sin is a thing. And the reality is uh, anyone who isn't part of team Jesus is bound by sin. You are oppressed by demons. Some people are, are even possessed by demons because the reality is they don't currently have a savior yet. But to those who give their lives to Jesus, meaning you get to know who he is and you say, I want to give my life to Jesus. It's like you think about when a father gives his daughter up in marriage and now she's going to be, she's going to become one with her husband. She's going to get, get in a relationship, an everlasting relationship with her husband. Picture it that way. When you come to know who Jesus is, you say, I want to have a relationship with this spiritual being. I want to know who he is. I want him to be a part of my life. Why? Because I want that light to shine in me. I want him to be my protector because I said to you in this world, demons exist. Being possessed is a real thing. Being oppressed by the devil is a real thing. Having negative thoughts and thoughts of suicide and anxiety, it's real. And to be able to have protection from thoughts of anxiety, from thoughts of suicide, from murdering, from thoughts of hatred, from thoughts of, you know, doing things that are not good, things that can get you in trouble. You need someone to save you. You need someone to protect your mind, to protect you as a person. You need saving because when you're saved, you're protected. And Jesus is that savior. He is that protector, Jesus. So he's the creator of this very world we live in. He's the son of God who comes from God, who shares equality with God. He's the light of this world, so we have light in this world because Jesus Christ exists. Ay, ay, ay. He's the savior of all those who give their lives to him and submit to him. And you think John 3, verse 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, being Jesus, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. But they have to believe in him. So when you think about he's the savior of all those who give their lives to him, that's the people who choose to believe in him. Like, again, you might be watching this and say this dread beard headed guy is ridiculously crazy. And so you refuse to believe in this Jesus I'm talking about. So you perish if you stay that way. But if you choose to take the opportunity to say, OK, this Jesus, OK, this is sounding interesting and I want to know more. And then you get to know more and you say, OK, I believe in that Jesus. He's real because everything else you said is true. This world exists. Demons are real. The devil's a real thing. People do commit suicide because they have suicidal thoughts and that must be coming from summer. All this starts to make sense and you start to say, my goodness, I do need saving. I do need someone that's going to protect me because you know what? I can't even control myself. That's how you know messed up I am. I need someone to help me. I need someone to save me from me, save me from the oppression of the devil. And that person who can save you is Jesus. So we have, he's the creator of this very world we live in. He's the son of God who comes from God, who shares equality with God. See Philippians chapter two. He is the light of this world. And he is the savior of all those who give their lives to him and submit to his authority. Um, I write, when you begin to talk about creation and the existence of life itself, you must bring up Jesus because he is the beginning of creation. <laughs> He's the beginning of creation. Jesus is light. The first thing God spoke into existence was Christ Jesus himself when he said, let there be light. So Jesus is the beginning and the end, the alpha and the omega. So you see that Jesus must be a, a, a name that comes up when you start to when you start to get in conversation about creation and the existence of human beings, the existence of life itself. Jesus has to come up because he's the beginning of everything. In this world, there are only two sides to which an individual belongs to, either light or darkness, light or darkness. There's no in between. You are either part of the light, team light, or you're part of team light, I mean team darkness. And, and, and now when you think team light, you think Jesus. When you think team darkness, think the devil, Satan, demons. When you think of the two, the two sides, there's only two. It's light, a.k.a. Jesus, darkness, a.k.a. the devil. There's only two sides. So people who are part of the light, 
live life under the leadership of Jesus and people who are part of darkness live life under the leadership of the devil or, you know, my Satan. Um, so who is Jesus? He is light and he is the creator of this very world. He is the savior of this world. He's the son of God who is equal to God and, you know, um, comes from God. And um, that's the simplified version of how I can give you who is Jesus. Because if I started to read all the different prophecies and from the beginning, I might confuse somebody and I don't want to confuse you. So I'm giving you a simplified version. And like I said, as you begin to dive more into knowing about Jesus, studying more about who he is, you will, you'll learn a lot more about Jesus than I said to you in this video, in the short video that I, you know, gave you a, a, a description of who Jesus is. But here's what I will tell you in conclusion. Jesus, because he's the savior of the world, when you give your life to Jesus, you choose to, I mean, you get to know who Jesus really is and you give your life to Jesus, your life can never be the same. Reason I say that is because I said before is we live in a dark world. The reality is the devil exists. He's a real, that's a real thing. Um, demons are real. Being possessed is a real thing. Being oppressed by demons is real. Having sleep paralysis is a real thing. Those are real things, right? Being addicted to drugs and alcohol is a real thing. People being homosexual, that's a real thing. But what's behind those things are agents of the devil, which we call demons. Demons. I'm going to be real with you. We're not going to sugarcoat it today. So why you need Jesus in your life is because Jesus can protect you. Because Jesus is more powerful than the devil and all his demons combined. Jesus is more powerful than them. And because we live in a fallen world, we live in a dark world, why you need to know who Jesus is and have a relationship with Jesus and give your life to Jesus is because your only source of protection in this world against the devil and his demons is to have Jesus in your life. I'll tell you, you know, I used to be afraid of the dark when I was growing up because I used to see demons. I'm gonna just be real with you. And as I got older, I, I always struggled with sleeping in the dark because I was afraid of the dark from childhood. But when I learned to know who Jesus was, a lot of things changed. I began to tell the devil, now you come see me now, you're gonna be in trouble because guess who lives here? Jesus. Hi, hi, hi. Guess whose team I'm part of? Jesus. And listen, the Bible says in James, I believe chapter two, that the demons tremble. It is James chapter two. Yes, it is. It says in verses um, 19, it says, you say you have faith for you believe there is one God. Good for you. Even the demons believe this and they tremble in terror. See, even the demons, they're not afraid of JR, but they're afraid of Jesus. So to anyone watching this, after now knowing who Jesus is, if you're honest with yourself and you haven't yet given your life to Jesus, you don't really have a relationship with Jesus. If you're honest with me, you're probably addicted to something, porn, you know, masturbation, uh, drugs, alcohol, sleeping around, strip clubs. You're probably addicted to something. You know, you're probably, you don't love people. You hold grudges. You're probably jacked up. And also you might have sleep paralysis every night or every other night. You might be oppressed by the devil. You might have suicidal thoughts. You might be going through all those things right now. That's a real thing. We've all been there when we weren't in a relationship with Jesus. And that might be you right now. And this is why I'm telling you who Jesus is. Jesus is someone you need in your life. Because I, I, I'll say it like this. He's the bully that can bully the bully. You, you know, there's a bully, right? But then there's someone who shows up who's bigger than the bully. He's badder than the bully. He's stronger than the bully. And the bully is now afraid because there's someone bigger and badder than him. And what I'm saying to you is we are all bullied by the devil and his demons. But when we give our life to Jesus, that changes. You ever see that movie with, with uh, Tom Hanks? I forget the name of the movie, but there's a scene that went viral. The black guy gets in there. He says, I'm the captain now. I'm telling you right now, you give your life to Jesus, it all changes. We, you go from being oppressed by the devil, afraid of the dark, addicted to drugs and alcohol, confused, suicidal thoughts, sleep paralysis, but then you give your life to Jesus, you submit to Jesus, you obey Jesus, and, and, and guess what? Jesus comes in your life, and then he tells the devil, and he tells the demons, hey, 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 hey. I'm the captain now of this person. Back up. <laughs> so, in conclusion, that's what Jesus is. He's the creator of this very world we live in. He's the son of God. He's the light of this world. He's the savior and protector of all those who give their life to Jesus and live in submission to his authority and have an active relationship with him. And he is light. So that's what Jesus is in a simplified version. 
And my prayer for anyone watching this who has not yet given their lives to Jesus, and you might say, how do I do that, Jared? Because you might be interested. So I got to let you know how you do that. It's simple. Um, I would tell you uh, to, give your, to, to give your life to Jesus is simply you have to confess in your heart and with your mouth that you're a sinner. And you say, Jesus, I give you my life today. I've recognized today that I'm a sinner who's jacked up and I've made many mistakes. And today I repent of my sins and give you my life. And after you do that, I would uh, recommend you to, you could even reach out to me and maybe depending on where you live, I could try to help you find, you know, get in contact with the nearest local church. You get baptized in the name of Jesus. That's where you get submerged in water in Jesus name. And it, it, it has spiritual implications of you dying and being born again. So after you confess, your sins, you know, between you and God in your heart, you repent and you give Jesus your life. You obey him and get baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And aside from doing all those things, Jesus will put his spirit in you, his spirit. And like I said, this might be a little complicated for you to understand, but just do it. If you feel like this video is for you and when Jesus puts a spirit in you, I'm telling you now, your life will never be the same. I'm telling you now, no devil, no demon will ever put fear in your heart again because there will be a new protector. There will be a new captain of you and that person will be Jesus. And I'm telling you, that's the greatest decision you could ever make because there's peace in Jesus. There's joy in Jesus. There's freedom in Jesus and there's protection in Jesus. Demons, will, we will no longer, when you're in Jesus, when you're part of team Jesus, when Jesus is your captain, you're no longer afraid of demons. Demons are afraid of you. You want to know why? Because everywhere you go, they don't see you. They see Jesus. Y'all have a good one.